Joining us now on the phone is Rogers Holdings Chairman Jim Rogers. Jim, uh, your first, sir, your take on this potential deal that is now on the table. Oh, Sandra, we've heard it all before in the last five years. The markets will rally for a while. In a year from now or several months from now, we'll all be talking again about Greece and what are we going to do about Greece. The debt keeps going higher. The promises keep going higher. And nothing really happens. All right, so what do you do with your money then? Do you own the U.S. dollar? Uh, do you buy uh, U.S. stocks? Oh, how do you play this? Well, I own the U.S. dollar. Last week, I happened to buy some European shares. I had an order in. I hope I didn't get hit. I got hit. So, yeah, if you own European shares, it's going to be great. Thank God I bought them. <laughs> but well, so as I say, at the time, I was panicked. So, Phil, when, when, when Jim first responded, I saw you uh, right. uh, in agreement with him. Well, I mean, my back question to Jim was, is the Eurozone too big to fail? Mm. Question to you, Jim Rogers. Well, as far as they're concerned, yes, it is. As far as the Germans are concerned right now, yes, it's too big to fail. Will it fail? It's not going to continue as we know it. Uh, there are going to be some people who leave and some people who join. But if we need the euro. I wish they could put together a sound euro. But in the meantime, it's certainly too big to fail. You see what happened? I well, mean, this is absurd. There's it's certainly that the question, Jim, about who should join and who should fail and leave. Uh, but the other, uh, the other question on the table is, uh, is uh, uh, the reshuffling of, of, of government at Greece. Alexis Tsipras, will he stay or will he go? That's another big question this morning. Well, I have no idea. I don't really care. I don't think it matters because whoever is there is going to have to play, play by the rules. Are they going to have to go bankrupt? They know it now. They, they hey. looked at, they looked in their eyes and they see that they see bankruptcy. Hey, Jim, it's Dave McDowell. It's good to hear your voice, that southern lilt that you have. <laughs> the, uh, if you, you mentioned the, the Greek deal, the debt keeps going higher. So the solution for a debt problem is more debt. If Greece's problems don't get fixed in a reasonable way, then what is going to fix all the other debt problems around the world? And let's start with the United States. Dagan, it's good to hear your voice, too. Uh, Dagan, you should be worried. You should be aware of what's going on. You should be worried and you should get prepared. You ask a brilliant question. Nothing's going to solve all this. Eventually, the market is just going to have to face reality and somebody's going to collapse. And it's going to have a snowball effect. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but certainly in the next couple of years. Again, as you know, the U.S. has had economic uh, setbacks every four to seven years since the beginning of the republic. Well, it's six years since our last one. We're going to have another one in the next year or two. The rest of the world is going to be affected, and a lot of people are going to have a lot of problems. I hope you and I are not too up. All right, Jim, you've always been a big believer in China. In fact, last week, uh, as we were continued to see the uh, Shanghai Composite uh, implode, you said, I'm still buying Chinese shares. Are you still buying China right now? Well, not, I didn't buy on Friday. I didn't buy on today. I did buy Wednesday and Thursday, yes, uh, to my now delight. Uh, I'm not sure that China's not going to have some more setbacks, but yes, I I'd rather be in the Chinese stock market than the Greek stock market at this point, although the Greek stock market is probably going to have a big rally. <laughs> hey, Jim, when you say get prepared for the coming collapse, whatever word you want to use, what does that mean? What, is it, what do you avoid? Do you avoid U.S. Treasuries? What, do, you, do you avoid sovereign debt? What? Well, well a lot of the, the hurricane is going to be in sovereign debt. There's no question about that. At the moment, people think the U.S. dollar and U.S. debt is a safe haven. It is not a safe haven, as you point out. The U.S. has huge amounts of debt. I'm afraid that next time we have a, a big economic problem, it's going to be centered in sovereign debt, because that's where the debt has skyrocketed. That's where the problem skyrocketed in the last six or seven years. All right, so, Jim, uh, final question. We've got the, the Greece deal on the table. We've got potentially a deal, uh, an Iran uh, nuke deal by the end of the day. Uh, we've got OPEC lowering their 2015 demand forecast for crude oil. All these th things playing a big part in the equity market, but the oil market as well. Oil prices moving this morning. Do you see oil prices going up or down uh, uh, from here? We're at 52 and change a barrel. The way most markets work, when you have a big collapse, there's a, a, a bounce. It's often called a dead cat bounce. And then after a while, you have a, a retest of the lows. I would suspect that crude oil is going to retest the lows, which were in the 40s and 50s, depending on whether you're talking about Brent or WTI. 
So yes, I would not be buying oil at the moment because I l- am looking for a retest of the lows. I expect that test to hold, and then we'll see that things will go higher in the next year or two because basically world oil supplies continue to the uh, reserves continue to decline except for fracking, and fracking is not a great business. There you have it. You, not often can you get Jim Rogers to tell you not to buy a, a commodity. All right, Jim Rogers, we love having you. Thanks for joining us bright and early this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank All you, right. Dagan. Bye. Well. <laughs>